staring at me. What's that? Mm-hmm. I was just trying to figure out how immersed you really are. Nancy, I may not be the most exciting guy in the world, but I don't think anybody's going to get immersed in the Governor's Commission on Agricultural Blight semi-annual report. <laughs> okay. There's something I want to talk to you about. It's kind of important. Sure. Right on cue. Just one minute. <clears throat> Senator Ryan's office. Hello, Bob. It's Dave Feldman. Oh, uh, hi there. How are you? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. I've... Uh, been trying to get hold of Frank here in New York, and I keep missing him all day. It's about Nancy. Oh, uh, yeah, well, I'm surprised you couldn't get in touch with Frank. He's been pretty busy up there. Are you able to talk? <sighs> well, actually, it's not possible. She's there. Right. Listen, give me a minute, will you? Nancy, can you get that file on urban housing? It might be on Frank's desk, maybe in the drawers. I think I had Jeannie refile it yesterday. I'll find it. Somehow. All right. Uh, I heard. Yeah, yeah, she might be back any minute now. What's going on? I was going to talk to Frank about this, but uh, I'm sure that you will understand. Yeah. You know about Nancy and Pat Ryan. Yeah, yeah, I do. Now, uh, please, uh, understand what I'm saying. It's not that I don't think Pat's a fine boy. The Ryans have been, all of them, been wonderful friends of ours for years, and part of me even understands how it happened, the two of them. Uh, but, Bob, see, it's not a good situation. There's no future for them, and Nancy knows that. Pat himself said it to Beryl the other night, but it's something that they can't let go of, and the longer it goes on, more it's going to hurt them, eventually. Uh, I'm not sure what you're getting at. Well, uh, just a minute. It's it's not it's not easy. I'm I'm going to ask you, Bob, to do whatever you can to keep Nancy in Washington for a while. A project, some sort of a committee, whatever. I want to give her a chance to focus on something other than this relationship. Give us some what time and distance, and then maybe. I understand how things are going with you and Beryl, and I wish I could help, but... Uh... You know, I don't call in my marker unless it's important, especially if it's a personal thing like this. But this is important, Bob. I want you to keep Nancy in Washington. Please. Now look, I'll talk to Frank. I'll see what we can come up with. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, I've got it right here. Okay, I'll get it over to you as soon as I can. I, I do understand that, and I appreciate it. Okay, see you later. Goodbye. Was it important? No, uh, yeah, 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 I'll take care of it. Okay. You wanted to talk to me about something? Yeah. Okay, uh... I guess the easiest way to say it is just to come out and say it. Mm -hmm. Bob, I want to leave Washington. I want to be transferred to the New York office. this a mess getting myself organized so i can go back to work next week you're starting to sound like yourself again haha -ha, i am myself again 
That person that went through the accident, the pills, that wasn't me. It's as if I left myself somewhere. I felt that from you. But I don't anymore, so I know you're on your way. Oh, I wish everybody knew that. I wish Seneca knew that. Jill, I saw Seneca yesterday, and he said you were making terrific progress. Okay, maybe I'm defensive about him, maybe I'm paranoid, but you know how I really feel? I feel like he's watching me all the time, waiting for me to fall so that he can catch me, so that I won't have one independent moment in my entire life. Oh, wow. Have you told him that? No, not exactly in that language, but I said, if I fall, I fall. It's all right, trust me. But he just doesn't seem to hear me. Oh. Come on, let's talk about anything that will make us laugh. How about something wonderful? Haha, <laughs> that's even better. Tom has begun to get his sight back. What? <laughs> when? It started last night. He, he can only distinguish light and shapes. But it's an incredible sign. So maybe in a few days, a week, he could have full vision again. Oh, that is so terrific. Oh, it is. It is for so many reasons. You've become so close these past few months. You know, it's funny because when we said our marriage was over and we stopped trying to make it work, it made us relax with each other. So we got to know one another for the first time, really. And I have just totally fallen in love with him. Oh, this sounds ridiculous, doesn't <laughs> oh, it? Oh, no! I think he loves me, too. I know he does. But I, I think he thinks I want him to stay because I pity him. And I don't. That's not it at all. I want him there and that's it. I want to see if, if we can have a life together. With family, a, children, a future. I wasn't ready for that before. I wasn't. But I am now. Does he understand that? Maybe. I think he's afraid to. Well, make him believe it. Oh, I want to. Oh. I want to take him to dinner tonight so we can just be alone and talk. Okay. And tell him exactly what you just told me. Well, you say it and I think it, but it may be too late. No, it is not. Not for you. Oh, I love you. <laughs> Come in. Hello, Roger. Hi. What's up? I uh, have someone out here I think you'd like to meet. This is um, Duke Cheever, one of the orderlies on your service. Hello. Hi, Dr. Bowen. What's going on? Well, you got me. I just came in and uh, got a message. Dr. Coleridge wanted to see me. I haven't even changed yet. I should be on duty now. Oh, don't worry about it. Okay. You're the boss. The Duke uh, is a very conscientious worker. He's uh, always busy. Well, I just do my job. In fact, he and Jill became very close friends while she was staying here. He, uh, he was a big help to her. I'm interested in hearing about that. Sit down. Well, there's, uh, nothing to hear about, really. And not, your wife's a nice lady, Dr. Bolak. I felt sorry for her. She was hurting a lot. And she was real sad, too, you know, losing the baby and everything. Hey, I don't know if I ever told you how sorry I was about that. I know it's been a rough time for the both of you. Yeah, yeah, it was. Well, I'm glad she got better, though. It was real hard on her. How's she doing? She's fine now. But as a matter of fact, Duke, it was, uh, it was rough on her when she got home, too. What do you mean? Well, somehow she got addicted to her medication. No kidding. No. Well, it's too bad. I guess that happens sometimes, huh? Is she okay? She went through withdrawal. Do you know anything about withdrawal? Well, yeah. Well, I've heard. It's probably the most difficult thing she had to do in her life. But she's okay now. Yeah. Well, that's good. Send her my best, would you? Hi. 
I've, uh, I've been asking you a few questions around the hospital with the uh, help of the chief of security, and we've, uh, we've come up with a uh, schedule of events that may or may not be related. Yeah? I have here a log of the days and hours that you've worked in the past four months. <laughs> Never realized how hard I worked. I guess it's uh, different seeing it on paper like that. Mm. I also managed to uh, make up a list of the days that Jill asked for money for myself or her sister and a list of canceled checks that she asked her secretary to check on. Uh, I don't understand. And also a list of people who uh, visited Jill on a regular basis. You, uh, you spent a lot of time with Jill, didn't you, Duke? Yeah. We were friends. And Morris said that Jill would call for you, sometimes leaving more than one message in a day. Jill was very upset when you weren't around. Well, I told you, I felt sorry for her. Well, we used to talk, you know, she'd tell me about her baby, and I'd try to cheer her up. Like pushing pills on her so she'd get addicted? I don't know what you're talking about. You know exactly what I'm talking about. Take your hands off me, Dr. Bullock. I haven't even started with you. Take your hands off me. You just got your license back. You don't want to screw yourself up again for beating up on one of your staff, do you? Nothing else to say to me. I got some work to do. Duke, you uh, know a lot of people around the hospital, don't you? Yeah, I get around. Does the name Ronald Green mean anything to you? Y yeah, yeah, he works up on uh, surgical services, something like that. He also has access to uh, the services drug supply. Or rather, he did, you see. He was arrested 20 minutes ago. And he named you as one of the people who would sell the drugs that he would supply. He's lying. Get him out of here, Roger. Duke, there's some people outside that want to see you. We, we were just friends, you know? You want to what? I want to be reassigned to Frank's New York office, yes. <laughs> now you're the one who's staring. Oh, well, I'm, I'm just surprised, that's all. Hey, I'll miss you, too. Look, I'm not going yet anyway. I know I'll have to train someone to take over for me here, and besides, we'll be back and forth, and... You've got a problem. Well, I don't know if you call it a problem exactly. But? But I just don't think it's possible. Yeah, Bob, I'd call that a problem. Why not? Well, we need you right here in Washington. You become an important part of this whole organization. Thank you, but I'm not indispensable. There are six people on staff already who could do what I do. Sure, it would take them a little while to get everything under control, but it's not that difficult. I mean, I didn't know anything about politics last year, and so they'd have it way above me already. Nancy, you've been around politics all your life. Maybe not directly, but something's got it rubbed off. I mean, you're a very special, special girl. You're doing a terrific job here. I'm flattered. <sighs> you seem very uncomfortable. Why? Well, because partly I don't think we have anything in New York for you right now. Oh, come on, Bob. You and Frank are always complaining that that office is understaffed and George is overworked. Mm -hmm. I mean, just last week, Frank was saying that he wished he could find somebody who knew both areas. So to act as his representative, I mean, that's one of the reasons I thought of it. Oh, why do you want to be transferred? <sighs> okay, look. I could tell you I want to go to New York because... I'm interested in urban affairs, or that I think it's more of an active role in the sense of dealing with people, or that I think I could be a valuable contribution to that staff, which is all true. But the main reason is, I want to be with Pat. Oh. That doesn't come to, it's, it's not a surprise, is it? No, no, it's not a surprise. What Pat and I have is very important to me. 
I love him. I miss him when, when I'm here. It's not easy. I mean, sure, it's terrific going to New York for the night or him coming here, but I don't know. Makes it all unreal somehow. We need time. We need to be together as much as we can to find out what we really have. Yeah, well, I had this girl, Linda, kind of did the same thing to me. Bob, this is not a crush. You didn't know me before Pat happened to me. I, I was alone. And I had been for a long time. Okay, I'm 23, but... It was beginning to feel like it was never gonna happen. I even considered letting my mother set me up, for God's sakes. Mm -hmm. I know it's okay to be alone. But I was starting to turn into myself, and it scared me. I, I'm not alone now. I don't know how long this is going to last, Pat and I, but I need to give it every chance I can. Nancy, I wish I could help you. <laughs> then say yes. I can't. Well, do you at least see it as a possibility? To be perfectly honest with you, no, I don't. Could you tell me why? I already have. Well, then tell me again. Look, I'll talk to Frank. I'll see what we can come up with, but don't get your hopes up. Never mind. I'll talk to him myself. Excuse me. You know, I really thought you'd understand. I'm sorry. Yeah, so am I. Hello. I can only see shapes, but I have a feeling that there's something very special going on here. Why do I smell cooking? I wanted to surprise you. Planned a little celebration for this evening. Well, what a splendid idea. Thank you. How are your eyes? Well, maybe it's only wishful thinking, but I feel that I can see better every minute. Hold out your hand. How's that? Beautiful. You know, I'm looking forward to meeting you face to face, so to speak. I hear you're so pretty. I'm sure you'll be disappointed. And I'm sure you're underestimating yourself as usual. Is there anything I can give you a hand with? I'm almost finished. Now then, I'm going to sit down and watch or try to. Fine. In here. Hi. Hi. Does she look surprised? What's going on? Well, I hope you don't mind. I knew you wanted to celebrate Tom's recovery, and I was afraid if I suggested you let me do this for you, you'd probably tell me not to bother. So I decided to surprise you. That was a nice idea. Thank you. Well, it was nothing compared to what you've done for me. And I want to be as helpful as I can while I'm still here. While you're still here? Yes. You won't be needing training anymore. Papi, you're going to have to stop thinking like that. You're here because we want you to be here, and I, I won't hear any more talk about your going away. Faith, why, why don't you tell her? Of course. Thank you. Well, dinner's all prepared, and I have a few more things to do upstairs, so I'll be down in a little while. Lovely girl. Faith, I hope you don't mind about dinner. Did you have plans? No. It was a nice idea. Now, I didn't mean to put you on the spot just now, asking Poppy to stay after my sight returns. I just thought, That's well, if right. I... It's fine. In fact, I don't think there's any point of anyone talking about going anywhere just now. What do you mean? We'll talk about it later. All right. Why don't you sit beside me? Okay.
Faith, I can almost see your face. You know, I've never forgotten your smile all these months. It's, it's been with me like, like a dream. Soon it will be real again. Yes. You're smiling now, aren't you? Yes. Yes, I am. I can tell. These boys and drama, oh my. Catch up with the five sexy singles who are putting a new spin on Southern charm. Don't miss an all-new Southern Bells Louisville, Thursday at 10 on SoapNet.